Hey guys, and welcome back to Shovel Knight. Steal thy shovel. It's time for the first level, Pride More Keep. Man, this level in particular, and I mentioned this when we were t uh, doing Mega Man 6. <laughs> yeah. This is the one that feels really similar to Nightman stage. It's like fucking uncanny. I wouldn't be surprised if they took inspiration from that actual stage. This wasn't actually the first level I played during my initial run. That would be the Lichyard, Spectre Nice stage, and uh, it was kind of a downgrade in difficulty doing this one second, I gotta say. Yeah, that's true. I think that was the same for me, uh, too. Like, Spectre Knight, I think, gave me more trouble. Oh, yeah, he can be a ripe bitch and a half if you're not prepared for that scythe of his. They actually have an achievement to, uh... Like, uh, what, the achievement is you can't get damaged on one of the bosses. Then when they made a version of that for Plague Knight, they said you can do it on any boss, but it can't be King Knight. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you like how I'm fishing in a castle? Very realistic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, of course it's as realistic as a castle having bottomless pits to begin with, you know? It's like they built that castle on the edge of the Grand Canyon. I love these little guys. <laughs> they're, they're, like, so ineffectual and so dumb, and yet I love them at the same time, yeah. They probably don't even realize what's going on, they just have a propeller strapped to them. Some cruel guy took a propeller and just strapped them under random rats he <laughs> found and figures that would be a good enough enemy to oppose Shovel Knight. Okay, trivia time. The level music is called In the Halls of the Usurper, relating to the fact that King Knight is actually not the real king of this place. Well, uh, Usurper Knight doesn't really flow off the tongue as well, I would think. But then again, they have Spectre Knight, so I don't know. See, I didn't know you could do that. Mm -hmm. I should just try to deflect raw energy with my shovel more often. It's exactly like real life. How tempered is that shovel blade? <sighs> Well, I guess it must be pretty badass considering, like, he can pogo on it, like, all day and it doesn't lose any sharpness, it doesn't bent up or anything like that. How did you fare against these guys? They come in a variety of tasty flavors. This is just the standard one, you know, he'll block, he'll counter, stuff like that. Well, for most of them, I didn't have too much of a problem once I learned that, again, Shovel Drop is OP oh, for this game. Yeah. You want to basically deflect their shield so that they're blocking up and then attack them. The other ones can get tricky, like the one that throws the arcing weapon. Those in particular I really hate, but other than that, once you learn the shovel drop is good, they're not too bad. If there is one lesson you take away from this playthrough, it's that the shovel drop is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Beatles, why'd you even come here? I don't know, I don't think anybody invited them. You know, they just kind of, it's like with the rats. You know, like, we need some enemies for this stage. Have the rats, have the beetles come in, I don't know. Oh, I love Plague Knight's animation for this. Yeah, this one is actually pretty good. He actually squishes himself into the frame. I love that. We'll be showing that off during the uh, Plague of Shadows campaign. But here's Chester. I have no idea how he got ahead of me. Did he squeeze himself in the little... Why does this castle have a direct like silhouette of Shovel Knight here? Well, maybe the uh, Deposed King worked with Shovel Knight at one point. I don't know. Fantasy world. Flare 1 is a pretty good, you know, standard kind of relic. It's just a direct fireball, but it can be pretty helpful for especially the aerial bosses in the game. So I relied mostly on that and the uh, Chaos Sphere to do most of my relic-based combat. Yep, yep. It's good for long-range enemies as well. Just keep an eye on that magic meter up there. Uh, one thing this game taught me, and, you know, I was playing it uh, the first time around the same time I was really kind of getting into Smash, was that, you know, general defensive play is good, but at the same time what I like about Shovel Knight is that He's a lot more mobile, because yeah. like you could, he could change his direction midair, he has the pogo, uh, you know, he's just easier to move around all around, he doesn't feel that slow, and that's really good for games like this, because I think it's good to, like, you don't want the game's difficulty to be something you can't control, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you fuck up, it should feel more like you're full, and Shovel Knight has enough tools to get out of any situation as long as you know what you're doing, really. The game feels good, like, control-wise. Level design-wise, I have a few nitpicks, but they don't really start to crop up until, like I mentioned, Polar Knight stage and so on. Oh, you got hit there. You should have deflected that with your magic shovel. No, I did that on purpose. I was only pretending to be bad at video games. Oh, good. It's like how King Knight is only pretending to be a natural king. Nicely done. No, uh, his crown is even made of real gold. What's it made out of, then? <laughs> Fake gold. Fool's gold, I would imagine. Oh, you mean pyrite? Eh, I suppose that would be a King's Knight thing to do. Um, do you want me to read his boss bio? 
Go ahead. King Knight isn't a king, he is a king-themed knight, but that doesn't stop him from making decrees. <laughs> As the Lord Defender of Pride More Keep, he commands a formidable army of minions. Experienced with repelling invaders who dare try topple his malevolent mon monarchy, King Knight is a master of single combat, and because he's dressed to the nines at almost all times, he's always ready for a brutal coronation. Pros, commanding presence, charismatic, snappy dresser. Cons, nicely a king. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty big con. That's actually a con that I think affects most people. Hey, what are you? Are you not a king? I'm also not a king. We should be friends. <laughs> Let's start a club. <laughs> the Order of No Kings. We can have one. <laughs> you stole my joke, you bastard. <laughs> In the area up there, I'm gonna bounce. And oh. you're gonna miss these poor fucking rats. Like, they didn't even do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know where they're going. Oh, I love this music. This is probably one of my favorite stage themes. I think my tip-top favorite is coming next time. I'm trying to remember my favorite uh, theme of this game, but I do have to admit, this music is really good. It gets you all, you know, really kind of into the game. Yeah, pumped up. There's also a lot of uh, these little hidden areas uh, on the side. They're usually distinguished by some sort of symbol, so it's worth it to kind of just sh shovel everywhere and see what you can uncover. I'm going out of my way to get treasure during this part of the game, just because uh, ah, I want to buy myself some fancy armor when we get the opportunity. That's true, and there is some useful armor later on. Like, actually, you know, like when Tom was planning this, he was looking to me to kind of advise him on what kind of armor to get and things like that, which is rare because I usually do, don't do that much work for <laughs> HFC. You do enough, man, and it is appreciated. But, I mean, you know, I was glad to help because I do really like this game, like I said, so it's kind of good to have a you know, project I can get enthusiastic about for a change. Of course, of course. Because I've hated everything else we've done. <laughs> like, really, he's just a fucking toss pot, really. <laughs> now, you would think it'd be strange that King Knight would have a bunch of dirt around his castle, but I suppose cleaning is not something a king should do, huh? Maybe the uh, the king of this place was recently deposed. Like, King Knight hasn't really had much chance to set up the castle the way he likes. Yeah, all the dust bunnies just kind of solidified into actual blocks to jump on. Ugh. Come on, keep doing that stupid thing you're doing. I was trying not to break the blocks during this part. I don't think it's going very well. There we go, finally, fuck it. And now the blocks get to die. Just feels good and cathartic to pick up loads and loads of treasure. Be sure to check behind the banners, by the way. They usually have a little something something waiting for you. I think over here we'll actually... No, we already did Chester. Yeah, uh, just over here is pretty much the focus on the uh, music sheet, which is also pretty fun to pick up throughout the levels. Like I said, it really encourages a lot of exploration. Well, if you're enjoying the music, uh, again, you'll be happy to know uh, not only will the Bard pay you for each individual music sheet, but you'll also be able to listen to it in the sound test. The, uh, the thing that you picked up, that is. Also, the soundtrack is freely available online for a very nominal fee of $5 or free if you're going to be an asshole about it. <laughs> oh, there we go. A big gimmick of this stage. Bounce on magic spell books, create platforms. Yeah, this gimmick won't actually show up until, I think, the absolute last stage, I think. Don't worry, we're getting close to the boss now. I'm so glad that they decided to put turkey on the floor for us to eat. <laughs> a holdover from Castlevania. Personally, though, you know, obviously you've got the Blue Hero and uh, the Order of No Quarter, basically another set of Robot Masters. I would say the game leans more heavily towards Castlevania, and my evidence for this uh, will be most evident next time when we go take on Spectre Knight. But for the time being, let's shovel some Griffins in the face. Well, let's jump in his face so we make sure the fire hits us, you know, warm us up. Oh, well, you know, if you want to play the game, you can play and record I the game. I did play the game, and I do it better than you! Oh. <laughs> then again, you were, you know, doing, you know, retakes to get the perfect run, so... Oh, here we go. This dialogue, it's so hammy, and I love it. Well, King Nine is just a big ol' ham in general. I have to say he is one of my more preferred, you know, favorite uh, members of the Order of No Quarter. Yeah, he's one of my favorite as well. He's even got the whole T-Visor thing that Shovel Knight and Black Knight has going on. Oh, oh, you gonna take that shit sitting down? 
King Knight? Yeah, as you can probably tell from the episode titles, everything will be based on either something Shuffle Knight says or a piece of music. But King Knight, he's really not that hard. Again, and I, I keep saying this a lot, I admit. But once you learn the Shovel Drop is OP, most of the bosses in this game are pretty much not really that difficult, especially for King Knight, who you can just kind of safely pummel in the corner once he dashes there. He likes to sweep across the arena, so be prepared for that. Once he reaches a certain health percentage, he'll bring out trumpets to blast confetti, like you see here, down on the arena, so try to avoid that. His boss music is, obviously, the decadent dandy. But because of that whole uh, confetti attack, you know, he just stands in the corner, you can easily get in a bunch of good hits. Mm -hmm. He's super easy, even without the Chaos Sphere, or whatever it's called. That is why he's one of the first bosses you can pick. I'd say, again, Spectre Knight is way harder. <sighs> this is how I end my days, beating up decadent dandies and then sleeping in the woods on my own. I'm gonna sleep near the uh, heat source in my metal armor, and I'm sure that'll be Ooh, fine. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe it's a cold enough night. That'll work, I guess. So yeah, Night Night. We should have one of those. I really hope they make a second game, just to get a like completely new order of no quarter. They need to make like a Dragon Knight, cause that would be fucking rad, admit it. I think Carmen Rider would sue. Well, no they wouldn't, because they don't have any power here. Bonus stage! Now sometimes, uh, thanks to the overworld map, um, a lot of different little events will show up, different stages, and even different enemy encounters. Yeah, yeah. See, I love how these guys finally decide to actually start dive bombing me, and they gave me way more trouble than I was supposed to. He's past the tutorial level now, lads. Dive bomb him. Yes, we must begin to engage seriously this time. We've gone easy on the uh, guy who's using a shovel because clearly he couldn't afford a better weapon, but still. I would argue that the skeletons are some of the more annoying enemies in the game because they just love to back up before you are able to strike them with the blade of your shovel. That's true, but they're otherwise really easy, so I'm trying to think of the most annoying enemies. I'll probably point them out when we, you know, get to them. Quick trip back to the village, hand in our music sheets and so on. And he's so happy that he doesn't have to write any actual songs. Well, what is a bard without musical sheets? Somebody who sings on YouTube? <laughs> I guess we're about backing music, that's how poor he is. Yeah, that's exactly how Gem worked out, right? Oh wait, no, that didn't work out at all, did it? What grudge do you have against the live-action version of Gem and the Holograms? Because you brought it up in multiple playthroughs so far. Because it looked fucking terrible and I was proven right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Play me a song, bitch. Play classical gas. <laughs> Freebird! <laughs> I'd like to hear Veteran of a Thousand Psychic Wars. <laughs> There's a lot of them. They say you can't have any weapons in town. What if you were, like, Fist Knight? Would that be okay? Uh, well, have to get it classified, I guess. I suppose. Do you need a license for your fist to use it in town? Yes, Shovel Knight, dance! Dance to the melodious tune! Don't you have something else to do? <laughs> Look at him rock out, I love that. Oh, yeah, he really is jamming, yeah. Give me that sweet, sweet meal ticket, my goat brethren. Why does he just eat the meal ticket itself? I mean, he's a goat. That works out, right? He has self-restraint. Oh, well, he's going around calling himself the Goatitian. I don't think that really applies. That's racial profiling, and he does not appreciate it. I don't fucking care. I'm racist, Knight. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This music does not match the village, but I don't care because I do not do two takes. What if you go into, like, maybe it's like the most radical village ever. You go and everybody's on skateboards. Yeah, this is awesome. It's like Tony Hawk Village. I want an electric theme night for the second game. That'd be rad. That'd be kind of interesting, yeah. Well, I mean, don't go all the way into the whole elemental category. This game avoided that, thankfully. But like I say, you know, kind of mix it up. Give me a Dragon Knight. That's all I ask. <laughs> well, I asked for money, too, but you're not going to give me that, are you? Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> Girl, yeah. Man, are you like fucking Goku? You have trouble distinguishing male from female. I have trouble distinguishing a lot of things. Ah, the rightful king has returned. Oh dear, we killed his griffins. Shit. Oh, 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 I didn't notice that until now, actually. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> ha! 
Man, this character is made for you. It's like you're actually in the game with Shovel Knight. You feel part of the adventure. <laughs> it's my first persona. And and I'm the other frog in the other town where I hate all of your fucking jokes. <laughs> it actually fits really well, yeah. Okay, guys, that'll about do it for this part of Shovel Knight. Next time, we'll be taking on the evil that is Spectre Knight. See you then.